Well, we're in Luxology Modo 801, and should I say the Foundry Modo 801. And um, what we're seeing here is obviously some hair. And I went for a specific procedure to get this hair. And although I haven't spent a long time particularly um, sculpting it and getting a nice particular hairstyle, or even a render even, the whole point of this exercise was to get a workflow going that works for, to give me control and um, this is one workflow that I've got which is a rather simple one and the idea of this workflow is is obviously like I said to make it easier and quicker to be able to sculpt and style your hair and obviously to be able to have full control so I'm going to just get rid of this picture here that you see this is the result of this hair and I'm just going to show you how I went about constructing this and about the, uh, the shader tree and the way that I've constructed it there as well. So the first thing is, is you'll notice that I've got for the item list, I've got the head and I've got a cap. The head would be representing the real head if it was a sculpt or whatever that may be. And the cap is a portion taken from the head. So let's just look at the cap for a minute without the head. What I've done here is I've actually assigned a specific patch of polygons to different parts of the head for different parts of the um, hair. And you can see this by the selection sets that I've actually selected. So I'm just going to just bring them up just so we can see these selection sets. So we've got the front as you can see there and by the way I haven't set these selection sets the way that you would normally do which would be to go to geometry um, and I mean selection and then assign selection set that's not the way that I did it the way that I did this is was to define a certain patch of polygons and then generate some hair based upon those polygons generate some guides and then I would assign that, you can see assign set here, I would sign that and I'll give it a name and then that name would then um, automatically select these and hide the others so that's just see all the sets that I've made here uh, so front, you can see here clearly that I've got the front here I've made one for the back one for the sides and one for the top and it's up to you in the way in which you would do this this is normally not the way hair is really rooted but I just wanted to try this out so by having these individual selection sets here we're able to sculpt uniquely those particular parts without affecting other areas of the hair which is the idea of having selection sets but that's not, not the only reason why I like to use the selection sets. And this really is related to the shader tree. What I've done is, is I've actually ass assigned these selection sets, not just by selecting the polygons, but by selecting the hair along with the polygons. And I just do the front here as an example here. So when I had this like this and it was all selected like that this was the point where I actually made a material for it so I would assign a material and I call this front hair I would do exactly the same for the other areas of the um, the geometry let's just bring everything back and what I'm left with is I'm left with all of these materials assigned to the individual selection sets now the result of this is, is you look over here to the shader tree, is that I have be able to create these different selection sets without having to have multiple geometry for the cap. And I'll just show you how I've set this up. So I'm going to go over to the render view because it's laid out much easier and better for us so that we can see what we've done with this. So I'm just going to go to the shading tree here and just waiting for the 
the real time render to update and then you'll see how I've set this up so first of all I make a hair group and I, I actually made this group after making all of these individual shaders you see these different groups for different hair parts of the hair so I selected all of these and press Control and G and it grouped them into this group and this way I don't only have to have one shader and one hair material so I don't have the multiples of that all I need in each particular group for the hair is the material so we've got particularly refined settings for these different parts of the hair and you can get away with using one material for the whole hair but you lose a lot of control by doing that and what I mean by losing a lot of control is that some of the features that are in the fur material really work better for different orientations and directions of the hair as an example here the top of the hair would bend at the root differently as to the way you want it to maybe bend at the sides or the back or even the fringe so to be able to have independent control it gives you a lot more um, control overall for your hairstyle and this way I'm able to get it nice and neat which is kind of what I was after for this particular test so once I started say with the side of the hair then I um, got the settings roughly the way that I wanted them to be um, for the, the width thickness and the general lay of the hair um, and if you just look over to here you see what I've done here so this is kind of what worked for this particular hair and then when I was happy with the overall result for that particular part of the hair the side then I duplicated that material I right click and duplicate and then I copied that into each of the other ones and then started tweaking them individually so the next point is is how do we get just one piece of geometry the, the, the cap of the hair to be working for all of these independent shaders or these materials well it's actually quite simple because we've already assigned a selection set to each of them so all we have to do is if, when we go to the fur material here you notice here that I've got the item as the head cap and I've choose the tag polygon tag as a selection set and then then from that you can select what particular selection set that you want to actually be targeting um, in this particular case it is the top at the one I'm on now you can see there and because I just disabled it it's going to re-enable it again but you'll see here that we can select from all the selection sets that we have made from the material and you can see here there's top and then it will show so this is the way that I've done it and you'll notice also that when I go through each of these that the back the sides and the front that they're all selected to their relevant position and by doing this it means that we can use the same cap and we can also see all of these hairs um, in real time for the OpenGL viewport and um, that is where I really kind of was able to work the way that I did so as an example here when I selected all of these and we go to the properties for that if we look right down the bottom here you can see that I set it GL color for the viewport and I wanted to see 100% density so I'd get a good idea and it didn't really slow things down so really that's how I set this up and uh, if you was to try that yourself you'll find that you'll get very good results and things will be relatively quicker when you design your hairstyle